okay. Okay. Uh, this is uh, Parsha's boat. And uh, the first, Bayom Hashem al Moshe, Bo al Paro, Kiani Yichbadati asleep of. Come to go to Paro because I hardened his heart, the slave Abadav, and the heart or the minds of his servants. Laman Shishi Osa Sayela Bikirbo, in order that I should put these signs in his midst. It's very strange. Uh, HaKadosh Baruch who's saying, come to Paro because I hardened his heart. I would say, on the basis of logic or seeming logic, that the, it would uh, simply, it would have been perhaps one would have thought uh, without understanding it that the Pasuk could have been written, uh, go to Paro in spite of the fact that I hardened his heart in order to put the signs in his midst. But the, it's emphasizing go to Paro because I hardened his heart. So we have to understand why is it that way? The truth of the matter is, I heard this question many, many years ago from my uh, Chumash Rebbe in high school, uh, Rabbi Herman. Uh, the, the, he, he asked this question, but he's going to give a, he gave, I should say, he passed away a number of years ago already, but he gave a different answer. He gave a different answer that, that uh, I think Shmuel David Herman, I think was his name. Uh, he gave a different answer than what uh, I'm going to give today. If I have time at the end of this year, I might mention the answer that, that, that he gave. I have mentioned it in the past. And uh, so, the, but so the, the, we have to understand why was this the reason? It's because HaKadosh Baruch Hu hardened Paro's heart that Moshe should go to him. And, and, the, and, why, and what's the reason? In order that I should place these signs in, 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 his, in their midst. So the question is, what's this emphasis on the idea that I'm, you should go you should go there in order that I should place these signs in their midst. What does it mean to place these signs in their in the midst of Egypt? And or, and then what is the uh, I, then in the second pasuk? Ulaman and another reason why you should go. Asher tisaper uman asher tisaper baz nevincha. That you will exp you will uh, tell over to your children and your children's children, how I toyed with Egypt uh, with Egypt, and the signs that I put in them, how I toyed or I played. With Egypt, what does it mean? I toyed and I played with Egypt, but the way the Mefarshim understand it, and that's the obvious explanation, is at a certain point, Paro was ready to give in. But Hashem is like Paro, but God hardened Paro's heart. So this is what we have to emphasize: Pesach night by the Seder. This is what we have to emphasize. To future generations. I would think what's important to emphasize to future generations is that God saved us from Paro. But why emphasize to our children and our children's children how Paro 
wanted to let the Jewish people out. But HaKadosh Baruch Hu, HaKadosh Baruch Hu did not did not let him. HaKadosh Baruch Hu hardened his heart in order not to let him come out. How are we to understand this? Now, And it, 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 so now also we have to understand why does it say ben ben this is discussed by the Mefarshim already uh, uh to, to uh the, the, why because the many of the Mefarshim say because people have a special relationship with their children and their grandchildren not so much with their great-grandchildren. Others say because it's three generations, because in Egypt, the Jewish people were there for three generations. I'm just wondering what is the significance? Why, why the emphasis on children and grandchildren? What, what's the significance? Generally, that you should tell your children. And obviously that your children should tell their children. That, that would be implied Gosnei Bincha. Why here is there an emphasis on your children and your, ch uh, uh, and your children's children? Why there is this emphasis here about that? And the, the, now the famous question that everybody asks is about the taking away of freedom of will. Because one of the basic foundations of Jewish belief is that man has freedom of will. If there hadn't been freedom of will, there would probably be no room, as the Rambam says, for reward and punishment. So if there is reward and punishment, there has to be freedom of will. Now, and it's a basic foundation, not that there aren't questions that could be asked against that. There are, and they have answers, some that we're capable of giving and some that we're not capable of giving. But the, the, quest, the question is, how, how is it that God hardened Paro's heart when Paro was willing to let the Jewish people go out of Egypt. Now, my father, very often, on the basis of the expressions in the Ramban, and more so in the expressions in the Sporna, would suggest that the reason is the following. Let's see. The Torah says, by Yechazek Hashem Esrei Paro, by uh, and HaKadosh Baruch Hu gave his heart strength. So what, what does it mean he gave him strength? In other words, and the, the expression, it's very interesting, the expression of the Ramban and the expression, uh, I think in the Sforna also, but in the Ramban is that, that Moshe, Moshe, uh, that, that, that HaKadosh Baruch Hu, excuse me, that, that, that Paro, Paro, didn't do it because of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, but ha Paro did it because of the Makos. He didn't have fear of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. He had fear of the Makos. What does that mean? So the way my father explained it was that Paro that Paro really wanted to keep the Jews as slaves, but the Makos was forcing him to, to let the Jewish people go out. But that's not what he wanted to do. Sometimes we do tshuva and we recognize our mistake. We recognize that we did something wrong. And sometimes people will not recognize that they did something wrong but they feel compelled. 
because of pressure. It could be parental pressure. It could be pressure of a spouse. It could be pressure of business associates to do the proper thing. But they have no regrets for the reason for what they did other than perhaps they did not benefit. And more than that, that they lost from what they did. But had the situation been different, they would do exactly the same thing. And the real truth, of course, is when a person, the certainly the complete shiva, is a person, as the Rambam says, will be Bosa Medina in the same, in the same uh, state, in the same country. And he will be in the same situation with the same people. And he will not commit the same sin. So Paro, it wasn't that he came to fear HaKadosh Baruch Hu, even though he said, Hashem HaTzadik. God is the righteous one. But he, he would do HaKadosh Baruch Hu was a Bochein Levavos. He understood why Paro was doing what he was doing. So Paro hardened HaKadosh, HaKadosh Baruch Hu hardened Paro's heart. Gave him Chizuk. Chazek Hashem is like Paro. He gave him strength to show, to do what he wanted, to overcome the pressure of the Makos. Very often, we find that the enemies of the Jewish people under pressure some, sometimes have to give in halfway, a quarter of the way. What happened in Egypt? Sadat, in his trip to Jerusalem, he became Mr. Peace. He won the Nobel Prize of Peace. The man who declared War against Israel on the Yom Kippur War. But the economy of Egypt crumbled. People were sleeping in the graveyards. He was compelled. To do it. And some of the some of the enemies of the Jewish people today, how are they able to persist? How are the Palestinians able to persist in doing terrorism? Because money is being given to them to pay the wives and the children of the terrorists who are suicide bombers. And to a certain degree, those who, who will give them this money, they are responsible for the Jewish people that are being killed. And those that empowered them also bear a certain responsibility. And the truth of the matter is, as we see in the Middle East today, the more that you give them, the more money that, they're get, that they get from the United States, the greater the acts of terrorism 
all over the world is. So, Paro, HaKadosh Baruch Hu gave Paro the ability. Why? I think it's important for the Jewish people, and perhaps not just for the Jewish people, perhaps for all the nations of the world, but especially for the Jewish people, to know who Paro is. Because if Paro was able to, if Paro was able to, if, if Paro had freed the Jewish people shortly after a couple of Makos, some Jewish historian, 100 years later, would probably have written a paper talking about how the redeemer of the Jewish people was Paro. Paro would have become the Abraham Lincoln figure of the Jewish people. The freer of slaves. Solomon Tisaper Bosne Bincha Ben Bincha Sashir is a wealthy bin Mitzrayim. When you talk to your children and your children's children. So when you talk to them, you should tell them how I played, how I gave Paro the ability to show who he really is. Your children and your grandchildren and all future generations should know that Paro was an enemy of the Jew. He was not a liberator. Yes, by he Mishalach Paro Sam, lip service, Paro accompanied them in the initial part of their journey. But don't be fooled. Sometimes we want to believe that these people, after they after they destroyed us, after they came in and chopped the heads off babies, after they did such horrific things. That if it hadn't been Jews, the whole world would have come out and screamed. And they did come out and scream. They came out and screamed against the Jewish people. They came out and screamed against the Jewish people. So... After all of that, the the so the the, the 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 we have to realize who power really is. Not to fool ourselves. Not to think that Sadat was a man of peace, and they were fools that in the, within the Jewish community that thought that Arafat Yimach Shemo was a man of peace. What do we find out lately? Lately we find out, we find out. They, we, we, I remember it from years ago, but everybody forgets that, that sometimes they issue two statements, one in Arabic and one in English. And the English statement paints them as being somewhat peacefully inclined. Is the Arabic statement, which is meant to arouse their followers, is is more 
emphasizes the point of go and kill the Jews. And it's important for us. This is important for us for two reasons. One reason I always mentioned a thought that was expressed by Rav Wernick who was my uh, the Mashkiach in the Hebrew Theological College years ago. He said, We say that we give praise to God to extol his greatness, extol the greatness to, to the master of everything. Uh, uh, the, to the formation, uh, to, the, to the creator. So, so the question is redundant. So he explained, we give thanks to God that we could give thanks to God. And we can understand that in the following manner. In other words, sometimes there are intermediaries. And sometimes there is inclinations that it was the intermediaries. And sometimes those intermediaries were Sonei Yisrael. But they were compelled. They couldn't help themselves. They had no choice. And there are foolish Jews who will see these people as their redeemers. How much did the Jews revere Roosevelt? And Roosevelt didn't lift a finger for the Jewish people. On the contrary, he did, every, he, he, he did everything he could, not that he did things against the Jews. He wouldn't do anything for them. But as a result of World War II, of America's involvement in World War II, which had nothing to do with the Jewish people, Roosevelt only got involved because of Pearl Harbor. He sent arms to Europe because of Britain and because of the Allies. The Jews played no role in Roosevelt's decision. But nevertheless, it's the, them going in is what ultimately freed the Jewish people from Hitler Yamach Shemo. And for many years, people saw Roosevelt as the Redeemer. And when you take a look, I think in Chicago, they don't talk about it anymore. But when I first moved to Chicago, I was in high school, they would still talk how in the Jewish areas of the, of the west side of Chicago, Roosevelt would get close, uh, around 99% of the vote. We didn't use our political pressure for the Jewish people. We might have used our political pressure against Hitler and Machimo. But we did not use our political pressure. There were those that did. There was a group of mostly European rabbis under the leadership of Leza Silver who went. But Roosevelt was assured 
that the Jewish public would not be behind these rabbis. That the Jewish public will vote for him anyway. When we, when we let ourselves bleed that as Jews, we have to one, fall for one party and not be concerned about the issues at hand and not be concerned about the blood of our brothers. And how do we rationalize it? Oh, he was against Hitler. Therefore, he was for the Jewish people. Why? And because we can't admit, like Paro, we can't admit that we made a mistake. Paro saw Egypt crumbling didn't change his mind because the hardest thing for him, he sees his whole world falling apart. And even after he admits that it's falling apart, and even after his servants tell him it's falling apart, no. I can't admit that I made a mistake, that I was wrong. And so one reason is to recognize that HaKadosh Baruch Hu is the Redeemer. But together with that, we have to recognize who Paro was. Because in future generations, we're going to be do dealing with the same issue. Now, we know we have Holocaust deniers. And initially, of course, as the Holocaust was taking place, everybody claimed they didn't know what was going on. Even though the news did leak back. First of all, many of the news outlets, especially the New York Times, didn't try its best to limit knowledge of what was going on in Egypt. All this has come out lately. And who owned the New York Times? Jewish people. When they had a, uh, an interview with Hitler and Max Shemo with the New York Times, this was just before World War II. They're almost praising Hitler and Max Shemo. Why is it that way? Because very often, as one secretary, Jewish secretary of state said, he's an American first and a Jew second. I would say he saw himself as being an American first, even though what he was doing was not in the interest of the United States. And he was a Jew last. During the, during the Yom Kippur War, it was only because of the intervention of Richard Nixon. The Jewish people connected with the government at that time was against giving Israel special aid to save themselves from the attack 
of the Egyptians. Why? Because those people saw themselves as Jews last. Their American identity took away their, not only their Jewish perspective, but their objective of perspective. They saw their Jewishness as taking away from their Americanism. And they wanted to prove to themselves that they were real Americans. But Nixon, who didn't suffer from that psychological problem, recognized that not only it was in Israel's interest for the United States to support Israel, but it was in the United States' interest as well. And it's interesting, and people, people tend to forget the Holocaust deniers are probably war individuals who even after the war began to say it, but on a massive scale. In the university world, it began many years later. A generation later, two generations later. Certain events before historians tried to reinterpret what happened. Before revisionist history takes place. It takes time. Usman to Sapir Bosme Bincho Ben Bincha is a sheer so off the bin it's right. When a son hears it from their father, they know that it's true. But very often, when it comes to the next generation and the generation after that, and the generation after that, people begin to think, ah, probably wasn't exactly that way. After all, somebody for his PhD thesis wrote a paper showing that Paro really loved the Jewish people. He was the redeemer of the Jewish people. And it's very interesting. But the problem is, Today, we live in a different generation altogether. We're not, we suffered not just from that problem of two generations, but the Shas Maisa. The world forgot about the atrocities that the Arabs did in October. There's something, oh, yes, it was a terrible thing. But now we have to protest. Then they didn't protest. Then they didn't scream. And when they were asked for a comment, what do you say about children's heads being chopped off? Babies' heads being chopped off. They wouldn't say a thing. But now they scream about the atrocities that the Jewish people are doing. So, and it's very interesting. In this idea that they, they, they could see Paro as being favorable, they'll take selected, we have such a thing as selected memories. Paro accompanying the Jewish people on the road when they leave Egypt. And then more than that, The, the Paro, Chazal tell us, he asked the Jewish people to join him 
in being good citizens of Egypt, to look at the welfare of Egypt. We have to look at the good welfare of our country. But not where that is detrimental to the Jewish people, Chassid Shalom. There were Germans who had trouble recognizing that Germany was anti-Semitic. It was only Hitler, Yamach Shemo. And there are fools that say, it's only the leadership of Hamas, not the people that accompanied them, not the people that cheered for them, not the people that empowered them. And there's some stupid Jews that are saying the same thing. Some of them might be getting money. Some of them are probably mentally ill. But most of them are probably just plain stupid. They're not able to intellectually consider the, what's going on. What was the problem with the Jewish people in Egypt? The problem with the Jewish people in Egypt was they saw themselves as Egyptians first and Jews last. And Paro joined them on the first day of their labor. They donated their time, their energy to build up Egypt. Only Shavit Levi did not. Why? Because Levi warned them there was a Mesorah Savos. Don't do it. It was a trick. Sometimes we want to believe that being that 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 being a good citizen of the United States is more important. What we consider to be a good citizen of the United States is more important than the lives of our brothers and sisters in Eretz Israel. And Paro on the first day was there. And we always have to ask ourselves about these leaders that we would like to believe that they are friends of Eretz Yisrael, friends of the Jewish people. Are they not just another Paro? President Biden went to Israel immediately after October 7th. He was there on the first day. Everybody was impressed, including myself. But then we hear about the pressure. And I don't know that it's true, but I sure need clarification that he's placing on Israel the limitations that he's trying to place in Israel from preventing other occurrences of the same thing. And then we hear, and you have to remember that President Biden is elderly, not much older than me, so a little bit. So I'm careful how I phrase it. But there is always a possibility that his vice president might become president. And we hear, and again, it might not be true, but there has been no clarification that she is placing pressure on, on President Biden against Israel for Gaza. And what would happen if that is true? And she becomes president of the United States. So those that may help make her president of the United States, they have the blood of the Jewish people in Israel on their hands. It's not her that did it. It's her that did it, yes, but it's you who did it also. Why? 
because you can't admit that you were wrong. Just like Paro couldn't admit that he was wrong. My Rebbe in high school, Rabbi Herman, he said, I don't think it's shot in the Pasuk. However, the thought is expressed by the Rambam and the Igros. Go see Paro now. Now that Paro is at his lowest step, that he sees the whole, the whole of Egypt crumbling, his life crumbling, his country crumbling. Because you can be the same way. The Jewish people can be the same way. How many paros do we have? How many people are supporting those who support Gaza? And I'm not just talking about the left-wingers. Those that are wearing the Hasidic garb. But I don't, it's against, it's not against the Hasidim. The Satma Rebbe came out very strongly. Lubavitch, it goes without saying, is totally devoted. But those that wear the religious, the Jewish religious garb at the front. And even the, I, I saw on television and the news last night that even when they demonstrated on Shabbos, Outside the White House. These people dress this Hasidim. I would only hope, I know it's a, it's barely a hope that it was just a bunch of Arabs who changed their clothes. But no probability if people from among us, unfortunately, So we have to, we have to be on guard. The, 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 uh, we, ha we have to recognize we, we cannot be a paro against ourselves. And we can't be a supporter of paro. And we can't be a supporter of those who support paro. We have to let the United States government know if you give money to those who give money to the terrorists, we will, it will not be our money. President Biden, I don't know. I was impressed with the first day that you were there in Israel. But I'm not gonna make the same mistake that the Jewish people in Egypt made. Now, I'm not going to have selected memories. I want to know long term. I want to know what's the truth about your vice presidential candidate who might one day succeed you. I am concerned about my brothers and sisters in Israel. And I don't care that she's married to a Jew. And even if the Jew gives a good speech in defense of the Jews of the United States, we've had Secretary of States who worked against our brothers and sisters in Israel only to have non-Jews help them. Uh, that the I want to suggest another thing, another answer to the question about the the lack of uh, the I would to to the question about why had Kaddish Baruch Hu hardened Paro's heart. It's my feeling that. And it's really, to a certain degree, it's, it's not against the answer that my father gave. It works hand in hand with it. Sometimes when somebody 
does something wrong. So it has an impact. And that impact does not end with the deed that he did. That impact continues for generations. And to a large degree, what Paro and the Egyptians did created a certain perspective of the Jew. That the Jew was a slave. And wherever you go, you're never going to succeed. And a person has to be held responsible. Not just for the sin that he did, but for the impact that his sin had on others. And we find in Parshas Kiseitse. So Chazal tell us there that we have Avera Guerreras Avera. One sin causing another sin. The first sin is Yifas Toar. Okay. It was Mutter under certain circumstances, certainly not something that a person should do. And the sin of the Afas Toar, of marrying this captive woman that led to a person in those days having two wives, and he hated one of the wives. And then, because of that, he did not give proper recognition to the oldest son who was from the wife he disliked. And from that was the sin of a Ben Sora Mora. A, a, a rebellious son. I don't stand. Rebellious son, that's another person. But Avera Guerrero Avera. One sin causes another sin is not only in regard to the one who does the first sin, but sometimes, and not just sometimes, very often, the sin of one person causes another one to sin. And to a certain degree, the first person has a responsibility for the sin of the second person. And he has to do everything that he can to alleviate the impact that he caused on that person. And heaven, very often, feels a responsibility to do that if the person doesn't do it himself. And to a certain degree, because of the impression that Paro and Egypt made regarding the Jewish people, heaven had to take measures to show to change that impact. And that's what it says. But Boal Paro, go to Paro. Because I harden his heart. In order to put these signs, these plagues in his midst. And use the word shisi to put. When you put something there, it's there. Eila hamishpatim ashir tosin lefnehem. Kishulchan aruch. You put, you put 
the laws in front of the people in a way they should understand it. In other words, that they should remember it. Egypt had to be the symbol so future nations should not act under the impact that they got from the way Egypt acted toward the Jew. And it's because of this that they needed the Marcos. Because of this, in other words, first of all, it wasn't the real tshuva, as the Ramban says. But it wasn't just punishment. And it was to serve the purpose, of course. It was to teach the Jews that they shouldn't make a mistake in future generations, as I said before. But there was a lesson there for Egypt and a lesson for other nations to learn from Egypt. A lesson to remember about God and about the Jewish people and about the special relationship that exists between God and the Jewish people. And a lesson to learn about slavery. And I think we have to understand that today also. We have to understand who the Paros are. And we have to understand who empowers the Paros. We need clarification. And we need to demand clarification. From all the candidates for president, whether it's the Democratic candidate or the Republican candidate. And we have to know what's going to happen if We can't just focus on the first day. Paro was ostensibly nice to the Jewish people on the first day. And the reason they were misled was because the Jewish people saw themselves as Egyptians first and as Jews second. And we have to let the world know. By the way, usually when we see ourselves as Jews first, the decisions we make under those circumstances are better for America as well. But ultimately, the lives of our brothers and sisters, both in Eretz Yisrael and in America, we see it today. We see what happened immediately after the disaster in Gaza. What happens to the Jewish students? And it's not going to stop with that. And believe me, it's only the Jews first. It's better for America also. It's time to not be a paro. See how low paro can how how low paro can go. We need clarification. We need to know whether the support of the first state continues. We need to know what will happen if your, your vice president becomes president. And we need to know that from the Republican Party as well. We don't know yet who the Republican candidate will be. Some say it'll be Trump. We have some inkling about his, his, his attitude towards Israel, how he, he was first to recognize Jerusalem as the capital of Israel, how he stopped giving aid to the Palestinians who are paying money for the suicide bombers. what was was we have to know about the future as well we haven't heard much we've seen a lot but we haven't heard much and we got we have to know about the future 
And we have to know about not only what his plans are, but what are the attitudes and the plans of whoever he chooses to be his vice presidential candidate. Because especially when you deal with older people, but even if it's not just older people, we have to be concerned about changing circumstances. And if we do not stand up for our brothers in Israel, if we do not stand up, because you should know, what happens in Israel has an impact on the perspective that they're going to have of us here in the United States. And if, unless we bear that in mind, we will be responsible not only for the downfall and the murder and the tragedy that overtakes our brothers in Israel, but we will be responsible also for what will follow the United States. And believe me, things will follow. I'm not, I'm not talking about a Holocaust and all that, but there's going to be great tragedy. We see it already. Only those that are mentally blind and don't want to see, as Paro said to Moshe, don't come back to me. I don't want to hear about it. I want to be able to ignore it. I want to be stupid. And unfortunately, there are some among us who, who are trying to be like Paro. They want to be stupid. Why? Because they can't admit they made a mistake just as Paro couldn't admit that he made a mistake. This is the lesson of Parsha's bow. The lesson of Parsha's bow is that we have to know who we're dealing with. We should not be impressed. We should not be impressed. We should not be impressed with what happens on the first day. And we have to know who we're voting for, why we're voting for him, and what will happen with changing circumstances. Okay. Questions? If anyone has questions, please put them in the chat. I think if I understand what Rebbe said correctly, there's a big distinction between an Avera taking place and just influencing someone because the halacha says, Yeah, yeah, and I'm because, not talking besides shlichas. No, because even if someone wants to be Mishalech someone, but they didn't do Avera themselves, and, and Rebbe was talking about the that the influence of one Avera. That's right. So it influences something altogether well, different. Yes. It's clearly different. Is there uh, at least some partial cum of uh, Yushav Aretz if we act to try to use our political influence? 100%. 100%. All the Achronim say it. Not only that, the Achronim say if you can contribute more to Yishav Aretz by being in America, you are Mekayim the midst of Yishav Aretz more by being in America. I mean, to a certain degree, didn't even Rav Cook, following, you know, that it was a, such a split among the post game of the Hatter Mechira, they said if we wouldn't allow the Hatter Mechira, p- p- people wouldn't be able to live in Eretz Yisrael at all. It, it could be he said, it could be he said that. I, I don't know if he said it or not. He certainly felt it was a great Sarach. And uh, that's. Uh, he, he, I, I don't know if he said it. That's uh, I'll say it. And uh, I, it's difficult for me to evaluate what was the need uh, at that time. Mm. I, I can't. Uh, 
you know, uh, I'm not, uh, I'm not arguing. I, I just don't know what the situation was. I know there were those that claimed that and those that claimed the reverse. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I, 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 it's difficult for me to evaluate. Hey, there aren't any other questions, so thank you.